What's up everybody? It is $15 Friday and if you are feeling a little bit bubbly and like you're in need of an afternoon snack, well, it might be time to break out the kava. Let's do it. <laughs> Loving friends, it is time to pop the cork on a little kava today. As some of you pointed out, the weather is in fact getting warmer, hooray. And with that comes a brand new set of palette desires in the way of whites and bubbly, and I am on board for all that. So to get us started today, I am talking about a kava, and not just any kava, a kava that hits $13, so under my $15 budget, and was named one of wine enthusiasts top 100 best buys of 2020. This is a kava like no other and one of the only kavas to be featured on Wine Access. It doesn't happen a whole lot, but when it does, I tend to pay attention. So before we get started, I want to do a quick demo because a lot of you out there are still opening champagne bottles or sparkling bottles uh, in a way that makes me rather nervous. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a little demo so nobody takes their eye out and then we can proceed from there. Sound good? Cool. With most sparkling bottles, you're gonna have this little wrapper on the top and most of them are also gonna have this little pull tab. So you're gonna use that. You're gonna pull the tab, pull it off. Then on the top here, there is this wire thing. We call that the cage. And then this loop here, we call that the key. You're gonna pull that down and then you're gonna twist it counterclockwise about four to five times. While you're doing that, make sure that thumb is on top to make sure that it doesn't fly off in case it gets a little too excited. Thumb on top, key down, twist. One, two, three, four, five. This one had a little extra, five and a half. And then push and pull. And then from the bottom, thumb on top, grasp the cork and then twist from the bottom you can go any direction you want, just make sure you keep it the same. And as you start to twist, you'll start to feel this move a little bit. It'll start to push up. Keep some pressure on there. Oh. Right, we're almost there. You can see right here, There's a, it's kind of coming out. It's ready to go. Don't let it fly across the room unless you want to take Aunt Nancy's face off. Quietly and carefully as you feel it about three quarters of the way there, then just just like that. A little quieter would have been nice, but we'll take it. That's fun, right? As most of you know, I like to drink my sparkling out of a white wine glass. So I've got two with me today. You can pick either. You can pick a white wine glass. You can pick a sparkling glass. You can pick a solo cup as long as it's delicious for you. But I just want to point out that A or B would be perfectly okay. I'm going to go with B today. I think B feels right. Um, so I'm going to use my Mark Thomas stem. So many of you have asked me what these are, uh, and I think it's high time that I give them their credit. These are Mark Thomas. He actually was a consultant for another glassware company that I really, really love, Zalto. Um, but this is his own line. These are the Double Bend series. I'm not being paid to say this, but I just love them, and they're wonderful, and so many of you have asked, so I figured I'd point it out. All right, so I'll be using that today, and we'll be talking, like I said, about kava. So last week, we were in Spain and we're staying there this week. We're continuing in Spain. We're not leaving the country. We're heading a little bit east and we're gonna be in Catalonia. So Catalonia is going to be the wide region that we're talking about today. This is where most of cava comes from. Now, what is cava? Let's start there. Cava is a sparkling wine from Spain made in the traditional or champagne method. Those are the same thing, they're just a synonym. So made using different grapes, but in the same method. So secondary fermentation happening in the bottle. So what's happening there? Well, unlike Prosecco, which is made in the Charmat method or the tank method, the sparkling in this case is actually happening in the bottle. So they're putting wine in, they're adding a little bit of sugar and yeast to reignite fermentation, they're capping it off, and what happens after fermentation happens for a second time or even the first time, you're gonna get a little CO2. It gets trapped inside the bottle and that is how you arrive with bubbly wines. And of course, it goes in a nice thick glass bottle so it doesn't explode all over the place and a cork is put in it after it's aged. So where do the differences lie between champagne and cava? Well, I've already explained where the difference in Prosecco and cava is, but champagne and cava are quite different, though they are made in the same way. 
Champagne has to be made in Champagne and in the same method using all the same grapes. Cava is actually not a region. It's the only Dio in Spain that is a style and not a region. So what does that mean? Well, it means that Cava can come from pretty much any place in Spain as long as it adheres to the standards of that Dio. When we're talking about Cava though, we're mostly talking about it coming from Catalonia and the Pinedas region. So about 95% of Cava comes from there. And it's a really, really cool region because just like Australia, Catalonia is known for lots of modern technology and forward thinking when it comes to winemaking. It's also known for having an amazing history and heritage, a core of tradition, but when we think of things like Cava, we definitely think of all of the modern technological advances that they have made in the last few years. And it's also what allows us to have a wine like this at such an amazing price. One of the other big differences between Champagne and Cava is of course, the grapes that they are made from. So in Champagne, we're talking mostly about the three grapes, Pinot Noir, Chardonnay, and Pinot Meunier. And in Cava, the style, we're talking about three grapes that you maybe haven't heard of yet. Let me tell you what those are. They are Chirello, Macabeo, and Perlata. Uh, they can also be made from a few listed at the bottom here, but mostly when we're talking about Cava, we're talking about those three grapes. That is the traditional makeup of most of the Cavas that we're seeing here in the United States. Aging is another big difference. Nine months is what's required for Cava if it's just regular Cava. If you see a bottle that says Reserva, well then that means it's aged for 15 months. And if you see Grand Reserva, that means it's been aged for 30 months. But today we're talking about the Regulare, though they did give you a little bit of an extra bump with the extended aging of the leaves. So let's look at this bottle we've got here. This is the Messia Salat. This is made with organic grapes, which of course we love. And you'll see on here that it has a couple things that you're gonna wanna note. This says Cava on here, which means it's going to be made in that style from those grapes that we just talked about. The other thing is that it says Brut Nature on the bottom here. So what does that mean? Brut Nature corresponds to the amount of residual sugar that is added after this wine has gone through secondary fermentation and been aged. So once they pop that cap off and put the other one on, a little bit of wine is dispelled. So what are they gonna do? They're gonna add a little bit back to it. And when they do that, they can choose to add a little bit of sugar. When you're talking about Brut Nature, you're talking about zero to three grams of residual sugar that are added. When you're talking about just Brut, it could be more. And of course, we can go up the ladder of sweetness just like we can in Champagne. So Brut Nature means this is gonna be super dry and crispy. I also want you to pay attention to the fact that this is really low alcohol. It's only 11.5%, um, and it does say certified organic by CCPAE, and I think that's it. So let's drink. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Mmm, mm, yum. Cava, the Messia Salat made from organic grapes aged for an extra month on the leaves. What does it all mean? It's Brut Nature, it's low alcohol, but what does it taste like? What is this going to feel like in my mouth? It's a great question, so glad you asked. So, on the nose, what are we smelling? Well, I'm just getting loads of apple, like tons of that great yellow green apple. It is not quite as ripe as we expect from maybe American sparkling, but it definitely doesn't have that really, really tart feeling that we get from champagne. It's like somewhere in the middle. I'm also getting a lot of nuttiness. Part of that's really coming from the Macabeo, which is also known as Vera. It can tend to have this sort of like nutty aroma. It can also come from the leaves. So if that's something that you really love, then you may want to seek out another time a bottle that's a Reserva or a Grand Reserva. When we talk about aging on the leaves, the longer time we're aging on the leaves, the more of that nutty, brioche toasty thing that we're gonna get because it's really taking on all of those great flavor profiles from that. So I'm also getting a lot of florals, I'm getting a lot of lemon, a lot of citrus. Really nice, tiny lift of bubbles, and this is so clean and dry. There is, like I said, it's Brut Nature, so there is really not gonna be any sort of discernible amount of residual sugar, so you're not getting that cloying, sweet, even ripe feeling from this wine. A little more. You guys, I have been drinking this all throughout me shooting this video. It's very delicious. Um, why Cava? Why drink this over something like Prosecco or Champagne? 
because when we're talking about the sparkling wine category, we can't help but compare them. We can't help but to think about where certain sparklings are applied in our lives. And I think it's a totally reasonable and good way to think. I think about wines like this all the time. I'm always thinking about the application for certain beverages. Why would I drink this versus that? And so when we're talking about kava, one of the great applications for this is for someone that doesn't wanna drink Prosecco. Now, why would you not wanna drink Prosecco? Prosecco is all about simplicity. It's all about something that's to the point, it's delicious, it's easy, it's refreshing. Sometimes there's a little bit of sweetness to it and it's quaffable. When we're talking about champagne, champagne is of course very quaffable and very delicious, but it's also filled with a lot more nuance. It's a much more labor intensive process. The aging is much longer. The grapes are different. The way that it's made is different. And so as a result, you get a different style of beverage, one that maybe takes more time to, to enjoy. You're also talking about a lot more money. So while Cava might be more in line with that of Prosecco price wise, it's really more in line with champagne in terms of style. And so I think of Kava as that place where we sort of split the difference. And so when I'm planning things like brunches or parties, events I've got, or even just like a weeknight where I don't wanna spend a lot of money, I'm thinking about going to a place like Kava because Kava over delivers most of the time. I will tell you there's a lot of garbage Kava out there. Not all are created equal and you have to be careful about the ones you select. I'm really, really happy with this one. In fact, I'm probably going to order another case of this to have on hand for when we're allowed to start partying again and having brunch and having friends over because it is such an amazing deal. Organic grapes, family owned, extended aging, and great nuance and complexity for $13. It is nearly impossible to beat and I actually don't know how they crammed all that in to $13 and exported it over here to the United States. So that's all great if you're having a party, right? You're having people over, but what about at home? Well, I think one of the things that people really overlook is the ability to drink sparkling wine when you're just sitting and enjoying food or a snack or whatever it is. And one of my favorite hacks in life is to drink a little bubbles with some popcorn. Oh yes, Pirate's Booty. Don't get it twisted. This is when I'm eating with it. So popcorn and champagne or sparkling wine is amazing. Don't I know, you're like sitting here, don't judge me right now, it's delicious. Okay, I know you're gonna think I'm crazy, but champagne or sparkling with cheese is delicious and champagne or sparkling with popcorn is delicious. And so I've essentially just combined the two. And this is not an endorsement of Pirate's Booty, except that it kind of is because I love Pirate's Booty. But I will tell you that these two things together are magic. So for $15, you can have like the snack of your life. You're welcome. Let's try it. It does get all over your hands, so don't mind me. Mm. Cheesy, salty, deliciously good goodness. I am telling you, there are a few things in life that will make you this happy. It's amazing. The simplicity of all of this just like kind of overwhelms me and yet it's also so devastatingly complex. I don't think this wine could be mistaken for champagne, but it could definitely be, be mistaken for a great American sparkling or a cava that is way more expensive than this here. Um, what else? I mean, this is just a delicious, delicious wine. So maybe you're not into sparkling yet. Maybe you're just sort of like tiptoeing into it and you're just sort of entering the space. This is, this should be your entry point because for $13, this is delicious and it's gonna pair with so many different things. And sparkling wine, like I mentioned, one of the most food friendly wines on the planet, the acidity of these wines, the laser precision of these wines. And then also because this has a little bit of that nuttiness, that weight, that texture that's coming from that, that lease time, really don't underestimate how many foods that can this can go with it's not just a cheese plate it's just not pirate's booty it's your chickens your salads your charcuterie boards i mean goodness all the things that i mentioned in the past weeks maybe not curry so much but a lot of the things that i mentioned would be delicious with this this wine as always is available on wineaccess.com once again this is the messiah salat made with organic grapes delicious with pirate's booty Ta-da, it is $13 and I apologize for last week if uh, those of you on the East Coast or some of the more East Coasty states, 
uh, couldn't get the gar Garnacha Syrah from Carde. Uh, I apologize, it sold out really fast. It was still available on the West Coast. I'm sorry, it won't happen again. I did talk to Wine Access to ensure that bottles would be made available this time around so that it doesn't sell out. But I do encourage you to act quickly because like I said before, the wines don't stick around forever and always. If you enjoyed this video and me talking about sparkling wine and eating pirate's booty with it, uh, I'd really appreciate a like. And if you like what I'm doing, if you're enjoying what's happening, well, I would also appreciate a subscribe. It helps me immensely and I really appreciate all your help. I will be back next week with more springtime favorites like the dress I'm wearing here. Until then, I wish you all a wonderful weekend. Drink deliciously and I'll see you all soon. Bye.